Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Francois Gray. I'm from the University of Geneva, and I'm responsible for the Geneva Tsinghua Initiative, a comprehensive education program uh, for the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, that was launched uh, uh, just over two years ago by our university and Tsinghua University in Beijing, uh, China's top university. Uh, we're here today for the Geneva Trialogue. Uh, this is the second Geneva Trialogue. Uh, a little over two years ago, my colleagues at the university uh, organized a trialogue which was really a kickoff to discussions in Geneva and with the world about knowledge and the SDGs. Uh, at that time, I have to say, the SDGs were not so well known to most people, and the idea of the trialogue, very intriguing, was to bring together three stakeholders in change on this planet. On one side, the academic world, then the international organizations, and then the private sector. And to find a space and a time where we could talk and share uh, our thoughts about how to adapt and uh, prepare for the changes needed for the, to achieve the SDGs. Uh, two and a half years ago, many people hadn't heard of the SDGs. Now, probably most people in this room have. Hands up, anyone who has never heard of SDG before? That's a good sign, not a single hand. Well done, Nikhil. So, uh, so we're in a different phase now, in a different mode. Uh, we're well into the period of the SDGs, the 15 years, and the challenge now is to roll out education for SDGs, one of the many challenges, and it's the theme of this trialogue. How can we scale, how can we grow education for the SDGs? Um, so uh, I'm just going to make a couple of very practical announcements and then we'll get on with the show. Bathrooms, toilets, WC is just across the hall here. Emergency exits on the left here, if an alarm goes off, smoking completely forbidden on the whole campus. You have to go outside the gates to smoke, if you really need to. Um, uh, and finally, food and drink, which will be served at lunch. Please do not bring food and drink into this hall. We get into a lot of trouble if you do that. So please don't do that. One last reminder is you all have badges to get in and out of the site. Please do remember, and I'll say this several times today, to give them back at the end. They're worth something, we recycle them, so please give back your badges. Great. With those few practical uh, indications, I would like to move on with the show and invite our first speaker in the welcome and introduction session. It's my great uh, honor to uh, invite Nikhil Seth, the Executive Director of UNITAR, the UN Institute for Training and Research, one of the three main partners who organized this trialogue uh, to say some words of introduction. Thank you, Nikhil. Well, good morning, everyone. It's such a pleasure to see so many of you on a cold Monday morning. I hope that the day will be productive for you and you will learn a little more about the SDGs. More important than just learning about the SDGs in the form of a 101 on SDGs, I hope you'll be able to apply it to your own sphere of work and influence to make the objectives of this dialogue which is to increase not only awareness, but action on the SDGs. So I'm very happy to see so many of you uh, present. And I want to start, of course, by expressing my thanks to Geneva University, to uh, Tsinghua University, to Zuntang uh, X. Uh, the X, of course, is symbolic of a very modern organization dealing with mass communications and the development of online courses and so on. But we'll talk a little about that. And of course, a special thanks to Francois Gray, uh, who has been the engine behind this trialogue, and to my own team. Uh, they're here in the room, I think, Elena and Einar. Thank you very much for making this happen. As uh, Francois has mentioned to you, the seeds of this trialogue were sown a long time ago. Actually, inherent in the adoption of the SDGs was the idea but look, the SDGs are a very different platform. 
And to be able to implement this platform in the 15 years, we need a deeper engagement than ever before. And how are we going to get that commitment? And this is what I'm going to talk a little about today. Uh, the three communities, as Francois has mentioned, that we hope to engage much more through this uh, trilogue. Of course, we have to penetrate all parts of society. It's not just the communities represented in this room, but these are the three most important communities, I think, from the point of view of awareness and action, uh, implementation uh, who are in this room. And the three communities, as Francois had mentioned, are of course academia, academia of all sorts, the business sector, business also is a complex uh, the business sector, the expression is shorthand for a very complex uh, set of people and actors who engage in producing 70% of the world's global output and contribute to everything, including the quality of growth, the inclusion of people, the type of things we do with the growth we have. And of course, the United Nations, we've been at the forefront of much of this action, including the development of the SDGs. It's been three years and four months since we've had the SDGs, that eventful day in September, where 170 prime ministers, presidents, crown princes, kings got together, and they said, hey, let's sign off on this wonderful agreement. And that, in my own three decades of life in the UN, has been one of the most uh, exhilarating moments in the history of the UN, when so many people have signed off and not just signed off reluctantly, they've signed off with applause on the SDGs. And as you all know, and, but I do think I need to remind you that the core principles enshrined in the SDGs include inclusion of all in its implementation, a greater stress on integration and policy coherence, its universality, every country, because small, rich, or poor has an obligation to implement the commitments they have made in the SDGs, and of course, a very special attention to those billions of people who are the furthest away, who need the most effort on all our part to get to where we need to get by 2030. As I said, I've been around, and I think it's a wonderful agenda that we adopted in September of 2015. It's a long-term agenda a 15-year agenda, which makes the role of education uh, even that much more uh, important. And what is most important, I think, and the major stumbling block I see now, three years and four months later, is on raising awareness of penetrating people's minds, of changing attitudes and behaviors, of making the second nature to think along the sustainable development goals and everything they enshrine. They not permeated education and learning as deeply as uh, we had hoped when we signed off on this agenda, and they haven't got the same political engagement, which is crucial for the basic realization. But in this agenda, there is no us and there's no them. The responsibility of implementing the agenda doesn't belong to some distant corporate leader. It doesn't belong to some distant political leader. It doesn't belong to some distant dean or president of a university. It's actually our agenda, and we have to implement it. So there's no us and them in this agenda, and we are all us as far as the implementation of this agenda are con concerned. So SDGs, and that's the point which we made then, and which I wish to repeat now, is everybody's business. It is not the business of some distant, uh, hard to reach corporate or governmental entity. The scale of the challenges, as you all know, is truly monumental. It's not been a very good time since 2015. You all know the politics, which have been very unfortunate. But apart from that, if all of you remember, the Paris Agreement was also signed in 2015. But where and when have been the highest emissions of greenhouse gases? in 2016, 2017, and 2018. So if the political commitments on greenhouse gases that were made in 2015 are an indication of people's political will, we don't have that in the actions that have subsequently been taken in implementing the Paris Agreement. Uh, if you look at the statistics, uh, poverty seems to be doing a little better. Hunger, we seem to be entering a world where there are more hungry people. So if you look at the scorecard, 
and the report card, because many of you academics are used to grading uh, things. And I would say the grade on the implementation of the SDG agenda is a C. It's not yet reached a B or an A, and we need to get there, and that's what we need to engage in trilogues such as these to see how do we give a better grade to the implementation of the SDGs. Now, what does it mean in the educational sector? What does it mean for institutes of learning? What does it mean for primary schools? What does it mean for secondary and tertiary education? What does it mean for adult learning in business? What does it mean for learning in the business sector and the corporate sector? And this is what we're going to dis discuss. How do we transfer the bedrock values and principles in the SDGs? How do we reach the millions of producers, uh, the small, medium, and large producers? We often only think of big corporations. We forget that much of the product, the GNP that the world has today, is the aggregation of the work of millions of small and medium and people in the informal sector. How do we reach these? And how do we reach the millions of consumers, the millions of decision makers with different spheres of influence who will set the scene for dramatic transformation on a worldwide scale? So our challenge is very great. The uh, platform itself has been adopted with great enthusiasm and an embrace are not seen uh, apart from the UN Charter which was equally uh, enthusiastically embraced. I have not seen any other platform which has emerged by this kind of consultation which we have had between all the member states, between civil society, with the business sector, with academia uh, that I saw in September 2015. But as I mentioned, that we have to take that uh, embrace into a meaningful embrace in the lives of people, in the lives especially of those that are furthest away. The challenge needs a collective and massive response. It calls for, firstly, the bringing together in a learning atmosphere the many initiatives in schools, in colleges, in businesses, in civil activism, in municipalities, in governments, and in media. Secondly, it is the sharing of good examples of integrated academic agendas, for example, and it needs awareness campaigns. It needs the sharing of success stories much more strongly because there's nothing which influences action much more then learning from each other, learning from your peers, and learning from success stories. And finally, about the potential and use of new technologies to scale up and assist in this education awareness space. So the challenge that I'm throwing before you is how do we scale up what we know on the SDGs and its implementation so that it permeates societies, it permeates government in ways that do lead to significant attitudinal and behavioral changes in these sectors. So the scaling up, therefore, as uh, was mentioned by Francois Gray, is the theme of our trilogue. Our little effort is to contribute by using current networks, which are there in the learning space in uh, academia, and uh, in the myriad of organizations and schools and colleges that we have been talking about, of be leveraging technology, and here, once again, Sutang X have developed a lot of MOOCs, as they are called, the mass online courses. And uh, uh, the, the co-founder is with us, and I'm very happy that he is with us. Technology also includes mentoring, online training, team-based problem solving. And uh, Francois, uh, Teddy, he will speak on this uh, later. But what are the other aspects of technology which can help us in the scaling up? So using networks one, using technologies two, and expanding the kind of partnerships. Some of the partnerships are enshrined in the Geneva Singhwa University. Uh, I have the honor of chairing their advisory group, and I know that what is being done in terms of developing multidisciplinary course content, in terms of the 40 to 50 people who get will be getting dual degrees, in, in terms of what they do during the summer of SDG learning and problem solving, how does that become mainstreamed in our colleges and schools? So these are the three things we are hoping to do in our trilogue today. Of course, much has been done, and some of the actors are already in our room. Uh, we have the Global Engaged Universities Initiative Program, and Angel Cabrera, I don't know if he's already here, but we're hoping to get Mr. Cabrera to come for this. And we've been leading with him a very large 
uh, getting together of universities, especially in North America. Uh, and that's a very, very significant coalition which involves millions of students and millions of teachers. And we, we will see what we are hoping to do through that globally engaged universities initiative. Of course, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which is the father figure there is Jeffrey Sachs. But now there's a myriad of organizations all over the world who are part of the Sustainable Development Solution Network. And I hope they will also be able to share some of their experiences in this networking and scaling up. We have the Association of Commonwealth Universities. Johanna, I wonder if you're already here. Uh, nice to see you, Johanna. I'm glad Johanna is here to, to share with us their own experience in the Commonwealth as to how this kind of network is working in universities in the Commonwealth. And uh, we have uh, the advisory board of the Geneva Singhwa University. And one of the things we are charged with in this advisory board is on this issue of using the model of the Geneva Singhwa University to see how we can scale this up globally in all regions of the world. Because learning with this example where Geneva and Beijing have come much closer, at least the academic community, uh, that is the kind of model I think we need to replicate globally to bring in institutions all over uh, in the developed world, in the developing world, in the emerging countries, in the poorest part of the world, to see how this kind of learning can become uh, the basis for this achievement of this very long-term agenda. I just want to end by mentioning something that we are hoping to do in UNITAR. Now, we have developed in the context of climate change something called the UN Climate Change Learn Platform. Now, that's a very large platform, and I was happy to see an article. I'm not sure if it was in the Forbes or somewhere else, which put that UNCC Learn Platform as the top 10, one of the top 10 learning platforms in the world on climate change. Now, that has been developed with the participation of 30 plus UN entities. They've all signed off on it, whether it's the World Meteorological Organization or the, the Secretariat of the Framework Convention on Climate Change that's based in Bonn or the WHO. The entire UN family has got together in signing off in that learning platform. It's an innovative platform. It's a, it's a platform which evolves. I want to do something like that for UN SDG Learn. But the SDG Learn platform, I don't only want the signatures of all UN entities. I want academia, universities. I want the business sector. I want everyone to sign off it, on it so that it's held up as the gold standard on SDG learning. If you go to the website and Google SDG learning, you'll come to hundreds and hundreds of websites. Now, the question is, what is the gold standard on learning here? And I'm hoping through this UN SDG platform, and we'll try and innovate uh, the business sector people here, and they know that there's nothing like reinforcement of the learner. For example, on Facebook, you get that little thumbs up, which encourages you to go and see how many people have responded to your uh, Facebook posting, for example. Something similar, I think, we need to do in innovating. Learning needs to be fun. It needs to be engaging. It needs to be interspersed with simulation. It needs to be interspersed with all kinds of real-time feedback from the learner so that this platform does become the gold standard. So this is one way in which we can help universities, we can help academia, we can help uh, the business sector, we can help the civil society activism, at least to get the facts right. What is SDG learning? What are the things? Because the SDGs are not a Christmas tree. They do include everything, but to treat it like a Christmas tree is a mistake. It's actually an integrated web of interconnections between human hopes and human aspirations and human fears. And how do we tackle human aspirations and human fears and human hopes? It can't be done piecemeal. And that's the lesson we have from the SDGs. Let's do these things in an integrated and collective and holistic manner. And that's why we are encouraging interdisciplinary approaches in universities. We are in, in, encouraging greater learning in the business sector. Get out of your silos and see how you solve human problems. So I hope today's trialogue will help in seeing how we scale up and approach these issues more innovatively, being more technology savvy, and seeing how we can make a difference. So I thank you very much. So next, uh, I would like to invite uh, our Dean of Social Sciences, 
and the director of the new dual degree master's program at the University of Geneva for the uh, Geneva Tsinghua Initiative. Uh, Bernard shares the uh, activity with our colleagues from Tsinghua, and he'll be telling a little bit about how this collaboration is progressing. Bernard, over to you. Thank you, Francois. Uh, it's my turn to uh, welcome all of you to this uh, second edition of the Trialogue on behalf of the Uni University of Geneva. As a matter of fact, the rector of the university will show up at the end of the morning, as far as I know, and he will do it much better than me. Um, just a few words about the University of Geneva and what we are doing on this topic. We have had a lot of initiatives on sustainable development and the SDGs more specifically uh, during the last few years. Uh, it is a topic which is the first one is the list of our strategic priorities. So it shows that how, how important it is for all of us, both in teaching and research, but also with uh, our objective of uh, interacting with our, our social and political environment. And we are more specifically uh, taking advantage of our close relationships with uh, international organizations located in Geneva, as you know. Uh, dozens of initiatives in teaching and research, and I have no time here for entering into details, of course. I just would like to highlight what we are doing within this uh, Geneva Tsinghua initiative, and I uh, welcome more specifically my colleague, uh, the former uh, Dean of the School of Public Policy and Management, Professor Lan Shui, who has been uh, our major partner in the building of this uh, project. This initiative is made of many, many different things. Uh, summer schools, uh, an accelerator for uh, innovative projects, uh, events such like uh, this one, and a dual master program, which has been already mentioned. And students uh, following this uh, summer school and this master program uh, share their time between these two universities, Geneva and Tsinghua in uh, Beijing. One of the most uh, innovative uh, dimension of this uh, teaching is uh, the part uh, we give to workshops, which are very much interactive, of course, between teachers and the students, but also with external partners, because we are willing to associate as uh, often as possible uh, international organizations or private companies for uh, providing ideas, challenges to students, and they are uh, supposed to uh, develop a specific specific project for addressing these SDGs during these, uh, these workshops. Uh, so we uh, devote a lot of time to uh, hands-on teaching, uh, challenge-based uh, challenge uh, learning, and again, uh, most of them being built with these external partners. And of course, these students, these dozens of students, spend also a lot of time thanks to internships uh, within these uh, external partners. Uh, presently, we are discussing the widening of this partnership to some other universities. Uh, we would like to build uh, some kind of club of five or six universities around the world in the different continents, uh, just for reaching this objective to become more global in this uh, initiative. And we would like, uh, again, to uh, provide the possibility for students of these universities to share field trips, workshop again, uh, but also exchange program for allowing students to spend at least one semester in one university or the other. So those of you who would be interested to know more about this, please show up and just uh, talk to me. I will be around during uh, all of the, the day. The name of this edition of the Trialogue, Scaling Education for the SDGs, scaling is exactly what we are aiming at. S downscaling, promoting the SDG global framework at the level of universities, promoting, promoting research activities and workshops with local partners with the Agenda 2030 in mind, of course, but also upscaling, facilitating the networking of uh, universities on this topic and being uh, fundamental partner to this global initiative. So I hope that all of you are going to enjoy a lot scaling up and scaling down all day long. And again, welcome for this event. So we have heard from two of the stakeholders uh, for this trialogue. 
the international organizations, academia. Now it's my pleasure to invite a representative of the private sector, perhaps a, a surprising one for some people in this audience who may never have heard of Shuitang X, uh, but in China it is the largest MOOC platform at the moment. And uh, we're working to see how we can collaborate on joint MOOCs, not just in China, but around the world. Um, but as you'll hear, Shuitang X has very, very big ambitions and is also helping a lot in the development of education on the SDGs within China. So it's my great uh, pleasure and honor to invite uh, uh, Professor Nye Feng Wang, who is one of the co-founders of uh, Shuitang X and also currently president of Tsinghua Holdings. Uh, Professor Nye, welcome. Dear ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I'm great honor to join the Geneva Trilogue today. I'd like to thank the University of Geneva and the UNITA for inviting Shweta X as a co-sponsor of this event. And thank our friend, Francois Gray, for the thoughtful arrangement. Uh, the developing of online education is an uh, important agenda for Tsinghua University, which founded Shuitang X, an online education platform in October 2013. Based on the shared vision in this field, the University of Geneva and Shuitang X established the cooperate relationship in July 2018. Launched six SDG MOOCs on the Shuitang X platform, which can be created by the Dow Master Degree Program joint offered by the University of Geneva and the Tsinghua University. This relationship will allow both parties to play the strengthen and cooperate strategically moving into the future of online education. New education brings a new world. Shutter X support 20 million learners for 200 countries and regions, including 4 million students at 19,000 Chinese primary and secondary schools. The habit of learning knows no age limit, as usurated by the age of Shuitang X users, ranging from 8 to 80 including students, housewives, people with dis disability, senior citizens, and beyond. Since July 2016, Shuitang X has been served global engineering learners as the online education platform for the UNESCO International Engineering Education Center. In May 2017, Shuitang X assist largest university in Nigeria to establish an online education platform, introducing global education resources to learners in Africa. In March 2018, Shuitang X cooperated with Nanjiang County government in Yunnan province to launch the Shuitang X Nanjian Internet School Project, assisting remote areas in southwestern China to provide quality education and to improve administrative capacity. In October 2018, Shuitang X cooperated with the United Nations Action Network on sustainable developing, developing, including SDG academic high quality books to China Chinese learners in order to provide SDG education. Shuitang X is devoted to the goal of quality education and work closely with the UN institutions and the academic community 
to promote SD, SDGs. From the world for the world, Shutan X now has over 2,000 MOOCs provided by MIT, UC Berkeley, the University of Geneva, Tsinghua University, and many other world learning, world leading higher education institutions, as well as Microsoft, Amazon, Baidu, and other world renowned enterprises. Through business cooperation between the academic world and the industry, universities and the enterprises now collaborate on education and the talent cultivation. Shutan X strives to support learners from all, the, all over the world. We would love to work with, together with international organizations, governments, high education institutions, and enterprise to con contribute to the promotion of SDT education in a large scale. I wish the Geneva Trilogue a great success. Thank you. So now we've uh, introduced uh, the three stakeholders through these three introduction, uh, introductory uh, remarks. Um, I would like to uh, invite a representative of the city and canton that we are in, Geneva. Geneva is a, a unique place, a unique place for discussing these sorts of issues. Uh, it's exactly 100 years since the League of Nations was established and made Geneva the the international city that it is today, uh, and the reason that many of you are here. Um, so it's a, with great pleasure uh, that I invite uh, Claudine Dayafune, who is uh, working for the Canton, responsible for sustainable development at the uh, Département de l'Instruction Publique, the people responsible for education in the Canton. Claudine. Good morning, and thank you again for inviting me. As uh, Professor Wei pointed out to me, um, this event is organized just uh, after a major uh, demonstration um, for climate last Friday. Schools went, students went down in the streets to demonstrate and um, to demand more commitment and action from governments. We had more than 20,000 students all over Switzerland, uh, 5,000 of which were here in Geneva. So this is very encouraging. In Geneva, um, we do act or try to act, uh, as you will see some concrete examples uh, in a moment in the field of education. Let me start by presenting uh, briefly uh, the Swiss and Geneva commitments uh, in the field uh, of uh, sustainable development. So our sustainable development policies um, and education is part of that at the Swiss federal level and um, in our different states are of course based on international agreements, of course UN SDGs, um, SDG 4 in particular and all uh, uh, of course UNESCO related uh, plans. That is our working basis. On this slide you can see when education for sustainable development has been integrated in our different strategies and laws. For example, uh, ESD is present in the Swiss federal law for vocational training since 2004, and in um, general school curricula for compulsory education since 2011. We have integrated sustainable development issues into our um, education law, and this is unique in Switzerland since 2001, and in our local agenda 21 also since 2001. So concretely, how is sustainable development implemented in um, the Geneva Department of Education? We have two fields of action. On the right side of the, of the slide, um, uh, we, we, it's the implementation of the state 
of Geneva's SDG 2030 strategy, um, which unfortunately I have no time to present, but all the eight topics mentioned on the slide, of course, can be addressed in our schools. Secondly, education for sustainable development includes, of course, integrating uh, SDGs in uh, school curricula, um, uh, providing teachers and students with special skills and tools, improving teachers' training. Here in Geneva, all future secondary school teachers have a compulsory course, whatever the discipline is, on sustainable development. And finally, we um, encouraging a whole school approach, uh, which includes projects that affect schools, building, surrounding, even management. Um, we try to collaborate with uh, local communities that have developed local agenda 21. The, the purpose of all this is really to uh, be consistent with what is taught uh, inside the classroom. So we have hundreds of projects uh, we can address in class, uh, the question of um, uh, migration, human rights, waste, energy, uh, climate change, etc. But I have chosen today to present three projects that are, are a little bit more uh, innovative, interdisciplinary, and that allows our students to develop some of the typical education for sustainable development skills like uh, systemic approach, perspective thinking, problem resolution, uh, projects that encourage students also to get out of their classroom, to meet with partners, associations, NGOs, even the private sector. Um, so the first example I wanted to present is called Robin de Watt. So in English, Robin des Bois is Robin Hood. So Robin de Watt is the Robin Hood of the Watts. And the Watts, as you know, is a, um, a way to measure uh, uh, electric power. So like the hero, Robin, uh, Robin Hood, the idea is to symbolically attempt to take from um, the rich um, a little of the, the energy abundance and give it back to those who do not benefit from it directly. It's a sort of energy solidarity between uh, schools here in Geneva and in developing countries. So concretely, we ask students to identify um, potential energy savings in their school with special devices. Then they build an action plan. And uh, during one week, all the school mobilizes to reduce energy. The amount of energy is calculated in watts and then in Swiss francs. And with the Swiss francs, we then finance um, developing projects. For example, we were able uh, to finance, to build solar panels on some schools in Peru where the, the, the so that the children can have heat uh, in, uh, in their classroom in winter. So this is a very complete project because it includes the whole school. Um, students can address energy issues and they can cope also with the social and north-south dimension of sustainable development. The second example deals with greening uh, roofs. Uh, on this slide, you can see we have modified um, a rooftop, uh, replacing the gravels that were initially, in, initially uh, present on that roof. So we, 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 we took some earth and planted different plants. We also built shelters for birds, insect bats. Uh, we, we have photovoltaic panels, which produce electricity, and a climatic station. So what is original about this project is that it's been constructed, it was constructed by more than 200 apprentices from vocational schools representing nine different professional sectors. So we have carpentry, electronics, designers, landscape artists, um, and um, hence these, these, these students uh, were able to address sustainable development issues while implementing their school program. So this roof is visited by professional, by teachers, of course, but mainly by, by students who uh, not only can see a, a concrete way to promote nature in the city, uh, but also they can they have works upon bio, on biodiversity and renewable energy issues. Second project, other, uh, other development projects include uh, school surroundings playgrounds. Here on the right side above, um, you can see a construction in the courtyard of a primary school, new tables, benches, and structures to play, all made in local wood. Here again, we have mandated vocational school students from different sectors 
who while realizing the project implement their school program, learn about environmental friendly materials, and deal with real clients. But the clients here are primary school students, teachers, town services, etc. Just below on the right side, a new biotope, uh, who was created by more than 700 4 to 19 years old students, in this case, high school students, uh, explain to nursery and primary school students why this new biotope is important to promote biodiversity. And together, they planted native trees, they dug a pond, uh, they constructed uh, small habitats for wildlife, et cetera, et cetera. And this new habitat now is a really interesting um, uh, field for, 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 um, uh, to, uh, of study for biology and, and chemistry classes. On the left side, uh, you can see a vegetable garden. It's very fashionable these days in our schools. Um, with a vegetable garden, not only you can, you know, you get your hands dirty, but you also can address many topics that are present in the school curricula. Um, for example, vegetable life cycle, biodiversity, food and nutrition, agriculture, etc. In addition, vegetables collected by the um, students are often cooked. And um, big intercultural meals are organized with the parents who in Geneva come from many different countries. Um, so this is often uh, organized in our schools. We also have beehives, etc. My last example deals with industrial ecology. Um, the, the, the state of Geneva has indeed uh, included this concept into its uh, Agenda 21. As you know, industrial ecology aims to um, make economic systems evolve towards more environmental friendly and efficient economy. So with different partners, including local industries, we imagine a project that would uh, um, promote uh, this concept of industrial ecology among our schools. So the concept is the following. We have a site, an industrial site here in Geneva that's called the Zibe. Um, and, and dozens of industries um, are, all, are already organizing uh, themselves according to the principle of circular economy. So the waste, material, energy of um, some companies are used by other companies nearby in a circular way. Um, we have contacted some of the industries who are uh, open to, who agree to open their doors uh, to, the, to the students and show them concretely how they put in practice industrial ecology. And to make this industrial zone more attractive to schools, we have imagined a sort of amusement park, just like the Spielberg Jurassic Park. You can see our logo uh, on, the, on the right uh, side above. Um, our park is called Zibe Eco Park. And and instead of a Tyrannosaur head, we have a, a big mechanical shovel. So the idea is that the students will be able to go on a tour with a van, stop and, 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 and discover concrete examples of industrial ecology, as well as the different jobs related to uh, this. Well, I have to stop here. Um, if you want further information, we have, a, we have a website. It's unfortunately only in French. Uh, but you can also contact me directly if you wish. Thank you.